Hello and welcome to this video tutorial by myself, Alan Barnard at White Hat Solutions. Today we're going to go through how to set up a WordPress server on a secure IIS instance within AWS. Now you can you can follow this um, video tutorial for any vendor, but we are just we are AWS specific for this uh, video tutorial. But the uh, WordPress and Windows side of things will be uh, is going to be universal. So Keep following even if you're not with AWS. If you want to get an AWS account to follow along, you can. You go to aws.amazon.com. Uh, AWS is Amazon Web Services for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the abbreviation. And uh, you can sign up for free. Uh, the only thing is you do need a credit card. Um, and you will get a uh, one year um, worth of... Uh, free EC2 um, free tier uh, instance. Now that means that you can spin, spin up their, um, one of their Windows servers for free and run it for a year on the lowest spec that they offer, which is quite handy because it is quite, uh, it does actually do what you need it to do. It's quite, it is responsive enough to actually function as a web server. Um, so let's just carry on, uh, just go through the objectives of this uh, video tutorial which will be, um, first of all, we want to prepare the uh, EC2 instance. Um, then we want to go and ahead and uh, prepare Windows for the uh, role installation, uh, which is like basically renaming it, setting up the uh, admin users, disabling the, uh, the, the built-in admin user, and uh, installing the roles, obviously. Um, then we're going to go and uh, install... Uh, Sorry, then we're going to go and install the roles, I beg your pardon, that's step three. And then we're going to go ahead and go through a video tutorial that will show us how to actually secure IIS, which is something that uh, a lot of uh, video tutorials out there don't actually show you how to do. And it's something that is uh, lacking. Um, and this is one of the reasons why uh, IIS has a uh, reputation of being vulnerable, is because of the fact that out the box, a IIS doesn't actually do um, this basic uh, security configuration which we're going to go through. Um, so uh, this is actually one of the things that people seem to neglect a lot and end up getting hacked. So if you don't do this, you're going to end up with, an, uh, with a very vulnerable server. Um, next up, we're going to go through uh, setting up the uh, FTP because out the box, um, the uh, AW IIS doesn't have uh, FTP already uh, set up. You actually have to go in and uh, configure it. You need to configure ports. You need to do ax You need to go and configure your um, NAT and your firewall. So it is quite a uh, bit of a task, especially with the AWS, where a lot of people have said on the on the AWS forum that. The only way to get this going is to disable Windows Firewall, which is not acceptable at all. We will be showing you how to do it without disabling Windows Firewall, so you have that extra layer of security. Um, if you don't want to use Windows Firewall, you can use a different firewall vendor, obviously. Uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're showing you how to get it um, running on the, on, uh, from as cheap as possible without actually uh, losing any, uh, without being too vulnerable. Um, so this is basically going to focus on setting up your uh, AWS instance with FTP with using Windows Firewall um, and trying to do this as uh, cost efficient as possible. Um, so then afterwards we got uh, installing the, uh, the word, installing and securing WordPress. Um, I'm going to be breaking that up into two parts, well into a few parts. The first part is actually just installing WordPress and um, then we'll go through how to do the securing a bit later. Now at this point of recording and editing videos, I'm actually reached over here, um, configure internal SMTP server, which is the last video I've just done um, and I've come back now just to carry it, just to uh, to to, to clarify what is going to be the objectives for this entire playlist. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start by um, preparing the EC2 instance. So if you don't have an Amazon account, as I mentioned before, you can go and register one. Uh, once you've logged in, 
you just go over here you go to EC2 which is under compute EC2 and you will get into your first uh, VPC which which is should be empty I've got one that's already in there because I've already been working on this video tutorial um, and I'm about a week into working on it so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how to launch a brand new fresh instance and we're just going to go to at the top here launch instance And if you don't see that, just click on instances over here and then you'll see that launch instance. Now we want to go for the, the uh, free tier eligible one because of the fact that we want to save costs. Well, I, I, I'm using one of the, uh, the, for my own servers, I'm, I'm using um, the same uh, AMI. Uh, but actually for the tutorial purpose of the tutorial, I would suggest use this one because that's the one I've uh, used um, with, with the other videos. So let's go to this one over here. We go select. And general, we want to just have the general purpose family. And we want the T2 micro. That one's free. So if you use that one, then you don't have to pay. Um, for uh, It gives you a free 750 hours a month. And that will keep you up and running for 12 months. So you should be you should be able to run this without having to pay very much at all. It all depends on what you're doing um, in relations to expanding drives and stuff. For the purpose of a WordPress server, we might have to expand that a little. The one of the the, the drive um, a bit bigger than the 30 gigabytes that uh, is provisioned under the free tier, which means that you may have to pay a dollar or a few dollars a month just for that extra little uh, 20 gigabytes or whatever you have uh, decided to use for your um, for your operating systems um, partition. So now we've selected this, let's go um, next to configure instance and we just want one instance, we want to protect it against uh, accidental termination and uh, we don't want to do anything more fancy here, we're just going to leave all this default and we're going to go next to add the storage I would select I would suggest add a second volume for your data partition actually for the purpose of this tutorial I should uh, insist that you uh, add the second volume give it 30 gigabytes and this is going to be your uh, data partition over here this one the root is going to be your system partition I would suggest making this 50 gigabytes now that actually does break the, the, the free tier eligible um, agreements so that you will have to pay a little bit, maybe a couple of dollars a month just for that extra 20 gigabytes. But we can carry on now. Um, I would suggest giving it a tag, some tags. Uh, so the key that I always put in over here is server and I just call this value test web server now when I'm dealing with an environment that I'm not uh, that, 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 that there's a lot of um, passing of strings and stuff like that I never like to put spaces in anything that's why I always put out in these dashes because not all um, scripting languages and stuff out there is going to be able to uh, read that space if you put a space in there and that will uh, basically break whatever comes after the space which you don't want so make sure you if you're going to be using something that needs a space whenever you're working with uh, servers or anything just put a hyphen instead of a space Okay, so uh, next we're going to need to set up the security group. We're just going to set up a brand new security group. And I'm going to call it test. And what we want is we need to set up the ports that are required for the functional server. So we don't want RDP to be available anywhere. We want it just to lock down to your own IP so that you only can get into it while we are busy, while, while you're going through the uh, working phase. If you do change your IP like myself, because uh, I'm dynamic, um, 
you'll have to come in here and just switch this in the security group later if you lose access to the RDP. Uh, so let's just add another rule, which is going to be um, a custom rule. Custom TCP rule is at the top there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a... Uh, well, I'm going to set up this custom rule for FTP, which is what we're going to need to have open. And we're going to make sure that this is anywhere, because we don't know where, um, which, uh, so which, um, which is the IP addresses of the WordPress.com servers, because we're going to have to receive updates from WordPress, and the updates come through FTP. So if uh, we don't have FTP enabled, uh, you're not going to be able to receive a, well, you won't be able to update the latest version of WordPress when it comes to the time that you need to update. So, let's go and set up another custom rule here, which is going to be for the passive range for the FTP. And now, just so that you are aware, I've been reading up and it appears that AWS um, doesn't support Active FTP. I've never actually tried it, so that's why I've only ever decided, okay, to save time, I'm just going to do it as a passive FTP server. So, the first thing you need to do is put in a port range, and I'm going to choose a range of 9001 all the way through to 9005. Now, the reason I'm keeping this port range small is so that we can limit the amount of simultaneous connections. Now, we don't really need this open for very much except for ourselves and for, up, for um, WordPress updating. Now, um, we're not going to be following through how to set up FTPFS, sorry, FTPS right now um, because of the fact that we do have time restraints on this uh, video tutorial. But at the very end of the video tutorial, when I do my final video, I will be going through how to do all this um, in relation to uh, setting up a SSL certificate on your IIS instance and uh, how to uh, set that up for both FTP and uh, HTTPS. But now what we need is one more port. Oh, sorry, let's just go here and just make sure that we select this two also to... Um, anywhere and now we need just to open up the last port that we need is um, port 80 so we can actually access the uh, the, um, the the WordPress installation once it's been installed so let's just go and select HTTP from that drop down list there that automatically populates port 80 and it automatically says anywhere but we don't want it anywhere we want it right now for the purpose of for security purposes while you're doing development. Um, you want to lock this down to own to specific IP addresses only, so that uh, nobody um, can can look in and spy on what you're doing. They cannot access your web page. They cannot see any um, vulnerable information that you might accidentally have displayed. So let's just go and do that. And um, now, I don't mind if you guys see my IP because this is going to be changed the next time I go and power cycle my router. Uh, so let's just go next, um, review and launch. Okay, so now it's going to give us a summary of what's going to happen. It tells us that we've got some things open to the world, but we know that we've done that deliberately. That's the FTP. And um, it also tells us that... Um, is not that the instance is configured and is not free tier eligible but that means that just means that we're gonna to have to pay a couple of dollars a month just to uh, have that extra little bit of space that we've put in here um, if we have a look down here it tells us just to make sure that we've got everything we need we have um, scroll down here we have the two volumes which is what we wanted and then now that it's all ready we've checked that everything is there that we uh, that we needed. Now if we just check instance details. Okay, so just make sure that the shutdown that behavior is set to uh, stop rather than terminate. Because what will happen is if you have it as terminate, 
um, when you shut down your computer, instead of actually shutting down, it deletes the entire virtual machine, which is you're going to lose a lot of work. So make sure that that is set to stop rather than uh, terminate. Usually by default, it is set to stop. So now we are ready to start and we just need to click um, launch instance. I'm not going to do that because I don't have to pay for, a, for an instance I'm not going to be using. But that's it. So you actually click launch instance and then you're ready to go. You've got your instance being created. And um, in the next video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to access that instance so you can start working. Thanks for watching and we'll carry on in a few minutes. Cheers.